this is so cold. But you see, Canada is known for two things. It's long lasting winter and it's beautiful fall. On this channel, I've made quite a lot of drone videos about what drone to buy, should you do this, should you do that, this movement, whatever that. And there are always these very, very essential things that build up a drone shot. But there's also these little mistakes and things I wish I didn't overlook at the beginning when I first started flying my drones. And if you know me, then you know that I've got this drone since the beginning of this year. And through this whole year, almost a year, I would say, you know, it's already October now. I mean, by the time you're watching, probably November. But through this year, there, I improved a lot, obviously. But there's also these little mistakes and things that which I didn't overlook, didn't underestimate it through this process. For example, these little thingies. Oh, let's get this. If you're not in the industry, you probably or don't even know what these are. You think this is a wedding ring you think i'm trying to propose you like will you marry me no it's not these are called nd filters this is look good oh my god oh, yeah but yeah <laughs> and you might be not. wondering what are these and these are actually sunglasses basically now let me explain these are the things that you can directly tell between beginners and pros and you might be wondering why so for the most part we when we're shooting drones we shoot real time right basically meaning 24 25 or 30 fps depending on where you are and depending on your likings and if you don't know this you always try to want to have your shutter speed double your frame rate normally when we're using dsr or mirrorless camera like this one that's filming me right now we can just tweak our aperture in order to compensate with the overblown of these lights but on drones the aperture is fixed meaning you can't really tweak it as i said in another video so what you now have to do on the drone right now is that you have to crank down the shutter speed to like one over thousands of a second which you might think that looks not bad right like for most people you might think it just oh okay it, it just looks a bit crappy it looks like some photos pieced together it doesn't matter but trust me like how good that motion blur actually looks like so for example this clip when i pause the clip right over here you can clearly see that the bushes are in motion like they have a motion blur it looks so much better and for me a company called freewell sent me over this well okay never mind okay to be honest i bought these by myself i tried over these and they are great not because i got paid or whatever but yeah one of the biggest thing with nd filters on the market when you see like comparison videos is that they significantly have many color shifts meaning that if you put it on it might be a bit more towards magenta or more toward tint or more um more more cool but these are actually really good quality so this is what I like to do. So for the most part, I use an ND8, right? So I just put the ND8 on and I try to turn my shutter speed to as close as one over a 50 of a second. And if it still is a bit blown out, then I will choose ND16. And most of the part that will be in the middle of the day. So yeah, you don't always have to be accurately amazing one over 50. It just have to be as close as possible. And this is like the thing that I wish I, con I convinced myself to buy the most when I started off with flying drones. If you want to buy anything, check out the link down in the description. Um, they are all affiliate from Amazon, so I can get a bit, you know what I'm saying? Um, so if you want to buy, buy down in the link, support me, support this channel, and let's move on. All right, if you watch my 30 day morning run challenge thing, you're probably quite familiar with this place. But that's not, thing because i don't even know what this kid is talking about because i think he messed up the order but the most important stuff with drones or just filming in general is your surrounding or your environment and there's actually three parts to this 
So first he got the location, the actual geographic location. For example, I'm in this little pond and you're probably seeing a million clips of this pond. And the thing is with these kind of location is before you take off, take a minute to think what kind of flight path, what kind of mood and whatever movement you're trying to convey. And trust me, I always come up with a creative path, a flight path, a movement to go with whatever movement they are. So just please take a second to think about the plan before you actually take off. And secondly, there's the timing and there's specific shots that looks better with specific timing. But in general, I like to shoot in golden hour, which is the time that's after the sunrise and before the sunset. You might be wondering why. So have you ever go onto a walk after having dinner and you look down at your shadows and you're like, wow, my shadow is pretty long. But then when you look at your shadows during midday, you see that it's actually no shadows at all because it's right below you, huh? Why is this raining? Man, this weather is so bad, man. Why is this raining so hard? I mean, what the heck? Everything looks so perfect right now. Like before I come out, but now it's just raining. I want to see. All right, well, I think I'm just gonna quickly wrap this up because the rain is not gonna let me to see, speak more. All right, I'm just hiding under these little trees over here. But point number three, or I say part three of this environment is your, huh? What is it? I forgot. But yeah, I don't know what this kid is doing today. This kid's um, mind is a bit messed up, I guess. I don't know. Just when you're editing this video, just remember to put a voice over to remind you or yeah. Just, I don't know, I gotta run because the rain is chasing on me. After I'm in the air, the horizon of the gimbal is something that I coped with with really long time. I always thought there was some problem with the drone itself, but recently I discovered this feature where it basically automatically straighten your gimbal to the horizon and if you didn't do it correctly exactly, you can still manually adjust it and this was huge for me because I struggled so much to rotate the footage into the right place in the editing software and speaking of post-production, it brings us to my last point which is color grading. So here's the thing that we have to admit with DJI drone footages and basically with any camera footages to be honest is that it doesn't look good straight out of camera. Now, I don't want to get nerdy and technical, so I created a love pack that I use on all of my drone footages, but I am not going to show you my workflow because one of the biggest thing I found with tutorials is that, let's say if you're a Premiere Pro editor and I use DaVinci Resolve, when you see my videos, when you even see I open DaVinci Resolve, you will instantly click off the video because you know um, different tasks bars do different things and you just don't want to look at this tutorial anymore. So that's why I created this log pack and I'm sure that this is going to work on any software, any editing software, even some mobile software. So just go download it, go apply it. Um, you can find this down in the link in the description and yeah, just go and thank me later. I made quite a decent amount of drone videos on this channel now and I don't know if I should keep making them and I want to lean more to a lifestyle and I might get a bit too repetitive with drones and yeah, I, I, except if something new launches or if I get something new, that's another story. But yeah, the main goal of this video is to just compress all the knowledge and experience I have through the last year and to help you to prevent all of these mistakes that I made so you don't have to make them. Well, to be fair, I'm still learning new things every single flight and I guess it all comes down to the very cliche word and that's practice and practice which make improvement. But you know what makes improvement for this channel is you clicking the little subscribe and the little like comment and and I mean like button and comment down below so yeah, that will support me a lot and help. Oh,